Hello, my name is Ian Upton and welcome to this Lightbyte webinar on how to create a video from your PowerPoint. We're being asked to move our materials online. So instead of walking into the lecture theatre or into the seminar room or the workshop, popping up our slides and delivering the session, we're being asked to create online experiences of this, typically a video of the activity. But videos are quite difficult things to produce. And if you've not done one before, the whole thing can feel very, very daunting. The good news is that built into PowerPoint is an absolutely fantastic function that enables you to add a narration to each slide in your PowerPoint. And when you've added those narrations, you can output that PowerPoint as a video. It does all the hard work for you. So without further ado, let me show you how. I'm going to share my screen. Now, before we move on, if you, I'm, a Win, uh, I'm a Macintosh user, so um, if you're a Macintosh user, this will look quite familiar. But if you're a Windows user, um, this could look a little strange. But don't worry, uh, once we're into PowerPoint, PowerPoint works identically, regardless of Windows or Mac or whatever. So the demonstration will be valid regardless of the system that you're working on. Let me fire up my PowerPoint. There we go. So this is a PowerPoint that um, uh, is finished and it's one that I deliver to my students quite regularly, as we can see. Down the left, I've got my slides and diagrams and all that sort of stuff. And on the right, I've got the edit window. I click on a slide on the left and then I can edit it on the right. So let's add a narration to the first slide. I click on the first slide and then I go to the menu. Now we have to be careful here because PowerPoint in its newer versions has two menus. We have the, the main menu at the top, okay? That's the one that's always been there. But then we've got this thing called the ribbon bar, okay? Which is a fairly new addition. There's tabs along the top here, home, insert, draw, design, whatever. And by clicking these different tabs, what happens is I get sets of different icons. If you can't see the icons, just click the tab a couple of times until you can see it. So I'm now going to click the insert tab on the ribbon bar and I'm going to move across right to the end and the last icon on my screen is audio. I click the audio icon, I get a number of options and I'm going to select record audio. When I, re when I get record audio, I get this little dialog box here. Now I can give my sound a name if I want to, I'm not going to bother. Um, and I can see that I've also got some controls, a play button, a stop start button and a record button. So I'm going to click record. Hello, welcome to our face to face workshop, which we're delivering online. Click stop. So I clicked record there. I made my narration. I click stop. I can press play, press play. Welcome to our face to face workshop, which we're delivering online. And when I'm happy with that, and because this is a demonstration, I'm going to be happy with that. I can insert it. Now I can see I've inserted a sound because it's put this little loudspeaker icon right in the middle of my slide, blocking the text behind. So what I need to do is click it and perhaps move it um, down and just off the slide there. That means it won't get in the way of the text that's on the screen. Let's move on to the next slide. Again, we've got the uh, insert on the ribbon bar. Make sure I can see the icons. Click on audio and record audio. I'm not going to change the title. I'm just going to click record. In today's session, we're going to give a reass... Now imagine I've made a mistake. I've stopped that there. That narration I need to change. Now it's really straightforward to change the narration. All I need to do is click on the record button again and it will overwrite everything that's gone before. In today's session, we're first going to give you a reassurance that you can move your course online. We're going to look at the challenge of teaching online, and then we're going to dip into some pedagogic theory and see how we can apply these to make your online teaching more effective. So I've added a narration there. I'm quite happy with that. Click insert. Again, I'm going to move the little loudspeaker icon down and off the screen. Whoops, sorry, off the screen completely so it can't be seen. Now, a little bit of advice. 
it's very easy once you get the hang of this to go yomping through your PowerPoint presentation, adding a slide, adding a slide, adding a slide, and then a disaster happens. The power on your laptop disappears or, or something equally catastrophic. At that point, you will have lost all your work and there's nothing more frustrating. I can say that from, from my own experience. So my advice is every time you've done a slide or two, just click save. That way, as you work through, you will always have the latest version of your work. And if the disaster happens, at most, you might have to replace a slide or two, not the whole thing. Keep remembering to use the save button. I'm now going to add one more narration. So just to remind ourselves, I'll click on the slide. I'm going to go up to the ribbon bar, make sure that I've got the insert tab clicked and I can see the icons. Move over to audio, click record audio. I'm not going to change the title. And click record. And this is the uh, last narration I'm going to add for the purposes of this uh, PowerPoint video demonstration. Quite happy with that. I'm going to insert it and I'm going to drag it off the screen. There we go. So I now work my way through all of my slides. I'm not going to bore you with that, but I could work my way through all the slides, adding a narration until I get to the end, making sure I save as I go along. Now, at this point, it would be lovely if PowerPoint had a play button that would work from the top, go through each of the slides, let me hear my narration and sort of give me an idea of what I produced. Unfortunately, I haven't found a way to do this. If you do know how to do this, let me know and I'll add it into this video. But to be honest, you have to disable all sorts of things in PowerPoint, add this, change that, and it is a real faff. So my advice is just leave it as it is at this point create a video and review it by looking at the video. So how do we create a video? The good news is this is really, really easy. I go to the main menu bar, not the ribbon bar this time, the main menu bar. I click file, I click export. This pulls up a file dialog box. Now, if you're a Windows user, this is going to look a bit strange. Don't worry, if you're doing this on Windows, it will pull up the familiar file box that will enable you to choose where you want to put your video file. For Mac people, this will look completely familiar, and you can see I've already got it set up to produce a file on the desktop. The key bit is the file format. At the moment, on my system, it's set to PDF. I don't want a PDF. What I want is an MP4. MP4 is a really compressed, flexible video format that works brilliantly on the internet. Now, I've got some options here, and you can fiddle around these if you want. I'm just going to go to quality and I'm going to click internet quality. And notice that it reduces the size of my video. That will make it much, much smaller to work with. It's really useful. And it will also change the quality of its presentation. So no, it's, you know, it probably looked fine on a 4K video, just not brilliant. But if it's on the web, it's gonna look ace. So I would choose internet quality, use that format. I then click export. Now, creating video, is a big deal. It's going to take PowerPoint a few moments to do this. So don't worry if you've got a big PowerPoint with lots of slides and lots of narration, it's going to take some time to do. I've only got 20 slides on here and three narrations. It's still going to take quite a few minutes to produce. So while it's producing that, I'm just going to introduce a couple of other ideas. Let's have a think about how other online people create resources, something like FutureLearn or uh, Lynda.com. They don't put up great big hour long resources that they expect people to plow through. They produce little five, 10 minute resources, which means that students can dip in when they've got time, you know, when they're on the bus or when they're waiting for something to happen, quick 10 minutes, they can just have a quick look online and they always know where in the system they are. So when we move our stuff online, you might want to think about the length of your presentation, the length of your PowerPoint workshop. And maybe take a moment to break it down into chunks, topics or whatever, little bite-sized chunks that students can sort of dip into as and when they've got the time. Something to think about anyway. Okay, my video now is produced, so I'm going to just make sure my PowerPoint is saved and I shall close it. And I'm going to double click my video, which has been placed onto the uh, desktop. I can see it's uh, a reasonable size there, even though it's internet quality. Press play. 
Hi, and off we go. Welcome to our face to face workshop, which we're delivering online. In today's session, we're first going to give you a reassurance that you can move your course online. We're going to look at the challenge of teaching online, and then we're going to dip into some pedagogic theory and see how we can apply these to make your online teaching more effective. And this is the uh, last narration I'm going to add for the purposes of okay. this. So you can see what's going on there. We have a video. We see the PowerPoint slide, which remains on screen for the length of my narration. When my narration finishes, it moves to the next slide and plays the next narration. And it moves to the next slide and plays the next narration right through to the end of the sequence. And that's it. So what we've demonstrated in this uh, short webinar is how to uh, take your PowerPoint and create a video from that by adding narrations to each slide. We've also touched on some good practice in terms of breaking your materials down into bite-sized chunks, which make it more palatable online. I hope that you found that useful um, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.